All right, thank you for joining me today in this webinar called Recruit, Hire, Retain, Superstar Part-Time Employees. We're gonna get right into this. Your time is valuable. I don't wanna waste a minute. My name is Don Kermath, sometimes called Dark Horse Don, but um, wanted to get right into this today. I wanna let you know that I don't provide legal or business advice. I try to do my best to make sure that this information is spot on, but I don't want to tell you how to run your business, so you are the chef in your own kitchen. Are you in the right place? Raise your hand if you hire employees. Are you just tired of hiring whiners and slackers? And do you struggle finding employees? Many people do. And do you have a hard time getting your employees to do exactly what you ask of them? I think you're in the right place if you can answer yes to any of those questions. But more importantly, would you like to see how you can use business systems to solve all your staffing needs? Then you're in the right place. Well, who am I? I'm a number one best-selling author on Amazon. You can go on Amazon right now if you want to and get recruit, hire, and retain superstar part-time employees. I've been hiring superstars and whiners since 1988. This is something I'm very proud of. I have zero dollars in chargeable unemployment claims. And that's largely because of the systems we put in place to um, dispute all unemployment claims. We operate two uh, retail locations from 714 miles away. Uh, in the upper right-hand corner, uh, that's where I live on the top of a mountain. And uh, if you follow the red squiggly line, you'll see that's the lobby of one of my stores where I operate uh, 714 miles away. So I live in uh, Virginia and my stores are in Illinois. And I use business systems to achieve success and so can you. And I'm gonna show you today some of the techniques that uh, I use and they're all covered in the book. So if you wanna get that book on Amazon, you are welcome to. It's the best uh, $10 investment you will make and it'll be about two hours to read. Where are we going today? Well, I want you to learn the one phrase that every job posting should have so your superstars don't have to put up with whiners and slackers. And of course, so you don't have to put up with them as well. And I'm going to teach you how to poach superstars like a pro. This is my favorite policy of all is to let them go in five days. The proven policy that saves your online reputation, keeps your superstars put, and saves you thousands of dollars uh, in training costs. So that's what we're going to cover today. It's all in the book, Recruit, Hire, and Retain Superstar Part-Time Employees. Again, on Amazon, you can get it in paperback or on Kindle. So why is hiring wrong an expensive problem for you? In the United States, 45% employee turnover rate. That means um, it costs between four and $7,600 to fully train an employee. If you had an 11-person staff, that will cost you over $20,000 a year in just turnovers. You might be thinking about creating an employee management system that will help you save all that money. This is huge. The, the book is $10, but you could be saving thousands of dollars just with some of the techniques in the book, not even all of them. All right, this was me. I had the 80 hours per week typical small business model. I was the CEO, the chief everything officer. I did marketing, accounting, human resources, maintenance, inventory, sales, training, information technology. I did it all. And I actually enjoyed doing it, but I wore myself out. And eventually, it became necessary for me to leave town. And I had to figure out how to run my businesses without me being present. And that was the impetus for me to learn how to use business systems. And I went from 80 hours a week to 10 to 15 hours a week using the business systems model. So here's a example of some systems that might be in your business. You'll notice that human resources are the center of everything. Human resources touch everything, which is why today this employment employee management system that, that I'm gonna show you now you can implement it yourself. Everything inside the book will help you do that. Um, and or you can uh, go on my website and you can do it yourself with my templates. And I have those uh, on my website. And at the end of the uh, webinar, you'll have an opportunity to 
to see where to go for that. So what does an employee management system look like? Well, as you can see here, what is in what is the purpose of employing people? Like, do you do it because you're a kind-hearted person? Is it because it's a social responsibility? Well, maybe you do it for, for those reasons, but the number one reason to hire employees is to make money for the business owner. And that could be you or someone else, um, but that's why you hire employees is to make revenue. So you see revenue here is in the begin in the middle of the system. It touches everything. And what you see here is the system that I created so that I could leave town and have a manager or managers run my businesses without me being present. So we created a, a recruiting system, a screening system, a hiring system, an onboarding system, a retention system, and a, 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 an employee uh, appraisal system that all connects these things together. They're all interrelated in this management system. So here's, here's one part of that system. Remember right here, we had the recruiting um, system up at the top. Now I'm gonna break the recruiting system down. This is, this is how we developed it for our small business. Re systems are basically made up of two things. You have, you have procedures and you have policies. You can see here that the procedures uh, are listed here. Just three simple procedures as part of our recruiting system. Poaching superstars, posting a job, fixing broken promises. And then our policies are always hiring. My favorite, don't be an asshole and uh, no rehire. And, and that's basically our entire recruiting system in a nutshell. And we're going to cover elements of, of that. Um, you might be wondering, well, what does it mean? Don't be an asshole. I remember when we were, there was a period of time when nurses were getting out of the nursing field and they were coming to us in droves. Like we were like one after another, we were interviewing nurses for our job and we're trying to figure out why would you, you know, give up such a noble profession? You went to school, you've worked lots of hours to get this. And it turned out that the doctors in this particular hospital were really treating the nurses poorly and they were just leaving and it got to the point where during the interview you know when i would ask them hey you know tell me about your last job and they would say oh yeah i worked for for a hospital xyz and and i would just say oh i'm sorry um you don't want to be that business where where people are are saying so this is the the first thing that i train hard on and it was something we discovered that it's very important not to describe the job that you're trying to fill but to describe the person you're looking for and the person you're not looking for and so this is the phrase that pays right at the top this is like a this is a facebook post for example hiring superstars that's what we're looking for we are looking for people who consider themselves superstars. Who are we not looking for? We don't want whiners, we don't want lazy people, and we don't want anybody with too many personal commitments. And then with all advertisements, make sure you have a call of action at the bottom. It says apply today, not tomorrow, not next week, apply today. This is very important. Now, once we put this poster up on the window in our store, and a customer came in and said, aren't you worried about uh, offending someone? And I, I said to them, who am I going to offend? Whiners, lazy people, people with too many personal commitments. I, I don't want them to, to work for us and you don't want them to serve you. So yes, you might offend some people, but you're offending the people that you don't want to work for you anyway. Here's a sample of a job listing for an entry level position. Now, this is, again, you're going to take it, leave it, but use what you can from this as much as you can. But just imagine, all right, entry-level opportunity of a lifetime. Now, doesn't that sound like a position you would like to work for? Like, don't say, you know, um, dishwasher or bed cleaner or, you know, whatever the entry position is, you know, trash collector, whatever the entry-level um, position, mail room, whatever it is, don't call it 
that because that's not attractive. That's not interesting. If it's an entry level position, make it exciting. It's the entry level position of a lifetime. Then go in to explain who you are looking for. Remember, it's an entry level position. It's for a part time employee. You can train just about anybody to do anything in an entry level position. We are not talking about you know someone who needs a PhD or something in a particular field. This is an entry level position, so it's very important that you identify the person you are looking for in the ad. And as people read this, so you're not you're going to describe the person you're looking for the job. You'll notice that I ask questions. Why do I ask questions? Well, read that question. Are you dependable and resourceful? What's the very first thing that you do? You answer the question in your mind. Yes, no. You the questions are irresistible. You can't not answer a question. You have to you have to answer it. So you're like Am I dependable? Am I resourceful? Well, maybe you're not as dependable and resourceful as you'd like to be, but maybe it's aspirational and you're like, well, I can be dependable and resourceful. So yeah, yeah, that's me. Can you sell and delegate? And then do you have lots of energy? Do you have intuition? Do you have initiative, right? These are things that we want in our person. And then don't forget this very important thing. Describe the person you don't want. We put this in every one of our job postings in some form or another. No whiners, no lazy people, nobody with too many personal commitment. And if I have a person who maybe has too many personal commitments, they're going to be like, well, I'm not going to apply for this job because I know they're expecting me to be at work on time. They're expecting me to come to all the shifts for which I have been scheduled. Now I ask them, does this describe you? Again, another question, close-ended. It's a simple yes or no. You might have a maybe there, but Pretty much, they're going to say, if they want the job, they're going to say to themselves, yes. And then, of course, the call to action always, apply now, apply now. We want you to apply now. And again, all this stuff is in the book, Recruit, Hire, and Retain Superstar Part-Time Employees, plus much, much more. Um, it's, it's well worth your time. Now, this is not in the book. I included it because during the, uh, I had just published the book. And one of my very um, uh, well-loved managers was leaving town. Her husband got a promotion and they were leaving town. Well, we, we, we had to scramble and try and find, remember, I'm, I'm 700 miles away. I have to find someone to replace her. I visit the stores, my stores, about four times a year, once a quarter. It was time for me to visit. I made a plan to visit for about 10 days. And in that 10 days, I needed to hire a new manager. And I, I posted this, two free sources I used. I, I went on Indeed and Facebook, and we also put it on our website. We put all of our positions also on our website. It's a great, great resource. We have an online app on the website, very short. Uh, for part-time employees, make sure that it's very short. But this is for full-time employees. Uh, we have, we're an indoor tanning salon. So I wanted to make sure because there uh, is a, you know, for some people, there's a stigma about the indoor tanning industry. I wanted to make sure people understood our philosophy first. And then I asked questions. Do you agree with that philosophy? Do you work well with millennials? Well, nobody works well with millennials, but uh, I think people wish they could. They would, they're, they're going to want to try to work well with millennials. It's, it's a, it's a big challenge to work with millennials. They have um, very specific needs and they like a lot of flexibility. So these are things that you have to be able to, to handle when you're working with millennials. It's not just about how much money they're making, but it's also about the, the flexibility that they want in their work schedule. And if you can accommodate that, then generally you can work well with, with millennials. They like lots of praise. So if you can, um, if you can do that, then, and, and it must be honest, Praise. Nobody is going to believe um, any BS praise. You, it has to be truthful and honest praise. And then going on to ask, do you know how to recruit, hire, and retain superstar employees? Well, I wrote the book on it, so I'm not too worried if the person doesn't have this skill, but they're going to answer that question. Yeah, I think I can, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter. I'm going to be able to train them, so I'm not too worried about that. Are you the kind of leader that brings the best out of their people? And I think you know, that'll, that answers a really good question. And then this is a very important next question, because this is really what 
um, the manager's job is in a nutshell is can you balance the business needs to both uh, all three of these increase revenues, reduce expenses while providing uh, exceptional customer service? Uh, can you work in an environment of continuous improvement? We're always, always, always changing. It's always, always, always improving. There's nothing ever stays the same in our in our business. We never can from one year or another to expect that we'll be doing uh, a procedure or policy this year that we did last year. This is always, this is sort of a moving target. Our systems are always improving. And then uh, I want people who, um, when they see a problem, they look at it more like an opportunity, like this is a learning opportunity. I can, I can, I can fix this. I can do this. This is, this is not a big deal. You know, they don't get stressed out over problems. Um, and then I go ahead and let them know that we don't hire whiners, slackers, or people with too many commitments. We hire superstars. Superstars want to work with other superstars. Does that make sense? Uh, you know, th this is a problem when you hire whiners and slackers you risk the chance of losing your superstars because they are like, I'm done. I don't want to work with these people anymore. I'm doing all the work. They're doing nothing. And uh, it's just too much aggravation. And so they move on to a place where there are their talents are appreciated and they get to work with other people um, with their like work ethic. And so then I ask the question, are you this superstar manager? Um, can you lead a team of superstars? And then I ask them to apply today. I had three competent, qualified leads from this free ad that I ran in Indeed and Facebook. And I, I had a tough decision to choose. I only needed one and I got three. Remember, I was only in town for 10 days. So I had to interview and um, hire and start training before I left town, this this new manager. And we did it And this ad. I I... I believe it, this ad is what drew in the people that uh, got me the qualified, competent, competent people. So poaching like a pro, I really, really had reservations about poaching uh, other employees, but it just got to be such a uh, a problem with other businesses poaching my my well trained employees that I was just like, well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna start poaching. So what we did in in our business. Uh, when employees give exceptional quality service, we like to praise them, and we do that on a regular basis, but occasionally it's really exceptional, and we give them what we call the Care Bear Award. It's an actual teddy bear that we give them, a stuffed teddy bear. Uh, it's at the employee meeting, so we embarrass them, take pictures, post it on social media, but what I had done for myself was on the back of my business card, I put this Care Bear Award for exceptional customer service. And on the front of the business card, it wasn't the typical business card that was for business to business situations or business to customer situation. This was business to potential employee business card. What did, what did that mean? Well, it had my usual contact information, but it also had a place for them to apply online. You know, I remember I told you that we have our employment application online. And if I ran across someone, maybe in a restaurant, or maybe I was in the uh, a gift shop or a hobby store or a hardware store, it didn't matter where I was. If, if I felt like I was getting exceptional customer care and I really would like that person to work for me, what I would do is I would give them this card and I would explain to them, look, and, and I, I'm the, the owner of XYZ business. And, um, you know, we give employees who give exceptional customer service a Care Bear Award. Well, I can't carry around teddy bears, but I do have this business card. And I'd like to give you this Care Bear Award because I think you have given me exceptional customer service and if customer service and if at any time um, you would like to switch jobs on the other side is my contact information and a place where you can apply to work with us if if you would like to work in a place where you are fully appreciated uh, for the quality uh, service that you give and then I will also go to their manager and I will say the same thing to the manager I will tell the manager that look uh, your employee up at the front, uh, John Doe, Jane Doe, 
whatever their, their name is, I'm making sure to always get their name, uh, always repeating their name back to them when I'm talking to them, by the way. And I'm, I'm going to tell the manager, look, they did this, they did this, they did this for me. You have a great employee there. I wanted to make sure that you knew that you had a great employee. Now, that manager, hopefully doing their job, will tell the employee that um, they got a kudos from a customer. And that'll just additionally reinforce to the employee uh, who's now holding your business card, which is really a card, um, asking them to apply now to um, a job with you. So that's how you poach like a pro. All right, now we're moving on to my very, very, very favorite policy. When we developed this policy, it was a game changer for um, em employee retention and employee turnover because effectively what we did was we got rid of the 30, 60, 90 day probation period. And we said, if you can survive the first five days with us, sort of a, a five day interview process paid because you're working for us, then um, you're home free. And why is this important? Well, it cost over $4,000 to fully train a new employee. And we think that, the, and again, I'm talking about part-time employees. I'm not talking about full-time, highly skilled, highly trained employees. I'm talking about part-time employees. We think the higher, slow, fire, quick policy should be modified. And we think it's higher, quick and set free quicker. Now, why do I say set free instead of fire? Now, that's another mindset change I really want you to, to do because a lot of managers and owners have this heartburn about firing an employee. And I want you to, to flip the mindset that you're not firing them in a negative sense. You're, you're, it's a positive thing. You're setting them free to go do something else that is more suited for their personality, their temperament, their skills, because it isn't working for you. Like you don't want them working for you. They don't want to work for you. So set them free so that they can go do something that is more appropriate for um, what they do. So change your probation period from whatever it is, 30, 60, 90 days, change it from that down to just five days. I know it sounds crazy, but let me, let me, let me use this analogy, right? So let's say uh, you go out on a date with a person. First time you've ever been out on a date with this person. And the date is like, meh, take it, leave it, you know, meh. And, but the person's persistent and they like, hey, do you want to go out on another date? And you're like, yeah, I guess so. And you go out on the second date. And then before long, the, the third and fourth date, but you're not really into this relationship. It's not really, it's not, it, you're passionate and it ends up becoming a drag. Now, you probably knew, maybe even in the first 30 seconds of the first date, it wasn't going to work out. But you went on the second date anyway. Then you went on the third and the fourth and fifth. And pretty soon, you're, you're 90 days down the road and you're like, oh, my God, I, I need to get out of this relationship. Well, why did you wait 90 days? Like You knew 30 seconds into the first date. And that's probably true with the employee, too. But I'm like, Okay, we're going to give them five days, but we probably really know the first day whether an employee is going to work out. So set them free, move quickly on to the next train, and that'll save you at least $3,600 in uh, training costs if you kept that person for the full 90 days trying to, trying to train them. All right, why set them free in five days? Well, you do it so they don't damage your online reputation. Now, what is the number one cause of a bad review online? It's poor customer service, right? It's the, the rude employee. Well, get rid of them before they cost you your, your online reputation. And that's difficult to, to recover from. Set them free before they cost you thousands in training. We talked about at least $3,600 in savings if you get rid of them in the first five days. This is probably the most important reason. Set them free so it doesn't cause your superstars to leave. It's, again, superstars do not want to work with slackers. And then set them free before it becomes problematic to set them free. Like you get 90, down, 90 days down the road and they get sick or they get injured or whatever it is. You can't let them go then without causing some problems because then you have a potential lawsuit on your hands and everything. No, these people who don't work out in the first five days, they're not going to work out ever. Don't 
drag it on. All right, is it legal? Yes, if you don't discriminate, but again, I'm not a lawyer. Check with your legal counsel first. If you have a service job, they're especially rigorous. Rigorous. I mean, this takes a very special person. Not everyone can do service jobs. They are very, very difficult. So, you know, they might need, um, you know, to be, you know, in a full-time office position somewhere else. Why prolong the pain? Yours and theirs. Again, this is that mindset I'm talking about. Set them free. It's not firing them. It's setting them free and, and it's setting yourself free as well. It's a kindness. Set them free so they can find satisfying employment somewhere else. So what are you going to do immediately? You're going to create job pro, pro, you're going to create job postings that describe the person you want and the person you don't want. Don't describe the position, right? I need a toilet cleaner. Nope, don't do that. Right? And then don't forget to describe who you don't want. No whiners, no slackers, or nobody with too many personal commitments. Poach superstars like a pro by giving praise. And by the way, if you use praise all throughout your business model, throughout your business, your employment uh, management system, that also works as an employee retention policy as well. So if you get into this habit of always giving praise, uh, and of course, it has to be valid. You're not just making a BS. You're, this is all good, uh, valid praise. Someone does something uh, correct, or they're they're learning something and they're working their way through it, make sure that you're giving them lots of praise. And then set them free in five days to keep your superstars and save your online reputation. Now, you might be thinking there's a res recession coming ahead and you're like, well, I'm not going to be needing to hire any employees uh, in the near future. We've got probably 18 months of recession coming up. Well, I thought about that too when I was making this webinar. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get people to figure out how to hire and recruit and retain employees. But in fact, um, you know, they're probably really worried. Uh, what their main worry is right now is the recession ahead. So I went ahead and I wrote uh, another book. Now it's not on Amazon. It's only on my website. It's called Winning the Recession. It's an ebook. It's a small business action guide to remaining profitable during the recession. That's right, you heard me right, remaining profitable during recession. You're not only gonna just survive the recession, uh, the ideas in here are gonna help you to be profitable during the recession. Even if you're not profitable right now, some of these ideas can, can get you there. Um, but it's important to know how recession affects small businesses. We got that covered in there. Um, it doesn't affect small businesses the same way it affects larger businesses and, and it's not a good, it's not a good thing. It's it's much harder on small businesses. I'm going to give you the 10 exact winning revenue opportunities available during a recession. And this is good for any small business. Uh, you'll be able to use these ideas. I tapped into some resources, uh, other experts to help put those together. And um, also why now is the time to raise your prices. So if you go to darkhorsesecrets.com, three words all together, darkhorsesecrets.com, you can now get the Winning the Recession uh, ebook. But also in the book, I'm going to give you the 14 hidden winning expense cutting opportunities available at any time. You don't need to do these just during a recession, but these will help you um, become more profitable because the beautiful thing about cutting the expense is every dollar on the expense line that you cut goes right to the bottom line, right? If I make revenue up here, okay, revenue gets filtered by all these expenses. But if I cut an expense, a dollar cut an expense is a dollar in the owner's pocket. And then of course they have to pay taxes on it, but that's the only expense um, that you have on, a, on an expense that you cut. And there's 14 of them and you'll be surprised. Um, there's probably in most small businesses, four or $5,000 worth of savings in these ideas in here. Why should you clarify your competitive advantage during a recession? Well, uh, in the book, I talk about it in greater detail, but the long and short of it is, um, and sad to say, you and or some of your competitors are not going to survive the recession. So um, the best the best businesses are going to are going to win, and those with the clearest competitive advantage are going to be the ones. 
where do you find a gold mine that you didn't already know you have? Oh my God, so many businesses have this, this gold mine sitting there and they're just not tapping into it. And I cover that in the book. And then of course, finally, 11 winning pro tips uh, to be profitable during a recession. Now, we survived the Great Recession of 2007. These 11 pro tips come mostly out of what we learned from the uh, getting through the 2007 Great Recession. And if we can, if we can survive the, the Great Recession of 2007, we can help you survive the pending set recession or any future recession. So go to darkhorsesecrets.com. Uh, right now, and uh, you're going to get huge, massive value. I'm, I'm, I'm conservatively saying you're going to get about two thousand dollars worth of value out of this one book, but I'm only going to uh, charge you nineteen ninety five, and you can have your money back in thirty days if you are not satisfied. If you don't think you're getting at least nineteen hundred ninety five dollars worth of value out of this book, I'm going to give you your money back. Now, I don't know what business you're in, but how many uh, items in your business do you let your customer use for 30 days and they can come back and say, you know what? I don't think this gave me the value I needed. Um, I'd like my money back. There aren't too many. Okay. Well, I've got a bonus for you too. There's a book called The Science of Getting Rich. It's public domain. I, um, I downloaded it. I edited it. Um, for modern language. And I also highlighted in the book the things that I thought were the most salient for learning how to, to get rich. I've used this book um, to get rich myself. I personally think I'm rich right now based on my lifestyle. I live um, in a mountain home. I work from home. I can eat whatever uh, I choose to. I work out, exercise. My health is great. I have, the, I have great health care. So I, I think I'm, I'm rich right now, but uh, if money is your pressing need, then this is the book for you. It identifies the three purposes of a fulfilling life, the specific laws to the science of getting rich. Uh, here's, uh, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I don't have any capital. I, I, it's, it's, it's a fallacy. It's not a barrier to getting rich. And why overworking is counter counterproductive to, to, to getting rich. So you can get both books at darkhorsesecrets.com, Winning the Recession and the Science of Getting Rich uh, at darkhorsesecrets.com. And then from in there, um, you can also get an electronic version of my Recruit, Hire, and Retain Superstars. Um, the advantage to that is you would get it right away. You wouldn't have to wait for Amazon to send you the paperback, but they do ship it for free. And, and I make a total of, I think, $2.35 or something, 37 cents. And every book sold. So I'm not getting rich on them, but you can. Um, it's going to help you immensely. So go to darkhorsesecrets.com and uh, get your uh, winning the recession and the uh, science of getting rich. Um, and also from within there, there's an opportunity for you to buy my employee management system um, through the website. So Thank you very much for your time today. Go to Amazon, get the book, go to my website, get Winning the Recession um, for $19.95. And uh, let's see you survive. Uh, and not only that, but be profitable on the other side of this pending recession. Thank you.